What's going on everybody? It's Eric Ray with the back here and in today's video I'm gonna be going over 15 things you need to know about franchise mode for Madden 20 I was able to play the closed beta for three days I played a lot of franchise mode spent a lot of time with it And I've got 15 things that you absolutely need to know about Madden 20's franchise mode Is it an upgrade over Madden 19? Is it worth buying the game just for franchise mode alone? I will cover all of that in this video now I did speak very briefly on the franchise mode in my previous video, but I've been getting tons of questions and honestly I just want to go a little bit more in depth with some of these things and really explain to you the ins and outs of the new things and the things that were unchanged about the mode so let's get right into it number one the scenario engine is it all that it was hyped up to be in my opinion from what I played no it was not now is it cool that it's there yes it's cool it definitely adds something else to the mode which is fun but what I saw personally and what other people saw, because I've talked to other people about this as well, it just didn't seem like it had a lot, at least not in the version we played. Now, will the final version have more scenarios? I don't know. I do know that the creative director, who is also a big franchise guy, said that franchise will get those live service updates for the scenario engine this year. They will, a few times a year, add more scenarios in, which is good. Overall, I think the scenario engine has a ton of potential, but what I saw in the beta definitely left a lot to be desired. I'll give you some examples of what happened in the scenario engine. So, the most common thing you're going to see as a coach, um, if you do the coach mode in, in franchise for the scenario engine, is every week one of your coordinators are going to come to you and they're going to say, you know, hey, we're going against Cam Newton this week. You know, this guy can really change the game. What do you want to do? How do we want a game plan for him? And you're going to always have three options. You have one, which is just disregard him altogether, basically saying, I'm not worried about Cam Newton. He's just one guy. Our team is good. We'll be fine. You have another option that is basically going to say, well, Cam Newton is too dynamic of a player. You can't completely take him out of the game, but we can do this, this, and that to try and, you know, contain him and not let him get too crazy, not let him take over the game. Or you could have a third option, which is basically to neutralize him altogether, saying we're going to throw the kitchen sink at him, everything we got, and we're going to try to make him have the worst game of his life. Now, depending on which option you pick, you're going to get a goal uh, you know, attached to that. It'll, it'll say, okay, well, you know, you need to get this many passing yards or you need to limit, if it's Cam Newton, you need to limit him to this many passing yards or limit him to this many touchdowns. Say, hey, if we can limit him from throwing over 200 yards, we feel like we got a good chance to win. Whatever the goal is, there's XP tied to that. Now, what happens the following week? Your coordinator will, will come back to you and either say, hey, you know, we didn't complete our goal. You know, Cam Newton kind of went crazy on us, but we still won the game, thankfully. And then, you know, you won't get your XP bonus for it. Or he'll hit you up and say, you know, we lost the game and Cam Newton got away from us. Like, we really failed this time. I told you we should have, you know, been a little bit more worried about him, yada, yada. Or the coach will hit you up and he'll be like, great job. We contained Cam Newton and we won the game. That's, that is the extent of the scenario engine from what I experienced. Now, there were times, for example, if you had a Thursday night game, one of the coordinators or somebody would come to you and say hey you know do we want to rest our players or do we want to practice as usual and then you could pick that and then every once in a while a beat reporter would hit you up about something but I saw that happen maybe twice in about four seasons that I went through in franchise so I would like to see the reporter hit you up more often about different things now I didn't personally play owner mode but I talked to a couple people that did and they said that there was like a couple instances where they saw like a receiver come to them or a you know a running back come to them and say hey I want more touches and then you'd have a goal like you'd have to get so many yards or whatever in the next game and if you did you would get like a nice boost for the player me personally I didn't see this at all and I think really the overall sentiment is people would like to see stuff like that happen a little more often like I said the scenario engine has a lot of potential but it did seem very bare bones from what we played nothing to write home about just yet but if they continue to feed more scenarios into it and really updated I do think it could be a good feature it just doesn't feel like it's there yet number two uh, the presentation seemed pretty much untouched for me now I do know that like last year the early version of the game we played didn't have the presentation updates in them yet like the halftime show that didn't really come out until the game came out so I don't know if it's untouched but I'm assuming that it's not because we haven't heard them talk anything about presentation yet uh, you know, the pregame stuff all looked the same to me. Winning the playoffs just doesn't even feel special. It was just showing snapshots after the playoff win, and then that was it. It just went to the to the stat screen. Like, you don't see the players celebrating winning a tough playoff game, which to me, that, that's, that really lacks a lot of immersion there. The Super Bowl is still the exact same. I mean, it's cool that you actually get the Super Bowl celebration, but it's unchanged. It's the same as it has been for a while now. 
Uh, you know, the sidelines and the crowds, all that stuff is still the same. So presentation, that pretty much just looked untouched to me. Number three, the abilities. Now, the abilities are big for the entire game, but they, they're they especially, uh, you know, pretty big for franchise mode. So franchise mode, number one, the offensive lineman can get abilities in franchise mode. I was playing with the Saints, so Teron Armstead, my left tackle, had a secure pass blocker ability, which allowed him to block those good pass rushers a little bit better. So you can get those on your offensive line in franchise mode. The rookies can get abilities. So when you draft a rookie, if he has a development that's either superstar or superstar X factor, it's going to say hidden. So you're not going to know what it is. And you're going to have to play 500 snaps with that guy to unlock his ability, which is going to take you about halfway through the season. Now you can kind of get a little bit ahead if you play your preseason and you kind of just keep him in the game the entire preseason you can get a lot of those snaps in with him early so then maybe around week six ish you can unlock his ability now for me I played four seasons I did a lot of drafting and there was only one time that I got a guy like this and it was a tight end and around you know week seven week eight his ability unlocked and he wound up being an x factor and he progressed really fast he had a zone ability and two superstar abilities so it was really cool when you actually finally got one of those first round guys that had that type of a, a development trait it was cool to see those unlock as he progressed through the season um, but a lot of the guys I drafted did not have that good of a trade it definitely seemed quite rare with rookies like I said I played four seasons only saw it happen once and I had a first round pick every year that was in about the middle rounds um, and I will say also with the ability is the CPU ability seem a little bit more overpowered because the thing is, is that, you know, the computer kind of cheats a little bit. For example, Bobby Wagner had an enforcer ability, which pretty much makes him hit stick you every time he tackles you. And it almost felt like it was a guaranteed fumble every time, even though I was playing on competitive mode or if you were playing on sim mode, it's, you know, would probably be, have been the same thing. But it felt arcade the way he could just force fumbles ridiculously. So I don't know if that was just a slider issue that maybe I needed to adjust, but the CPU guys with abilities definitely cheat more. Uh, than normal but abilities overall I thought was just a good addition to franchise mode because you definitely wanted to acquire those guys with abilities and trades or from free agency if you could now number four is the contracts contracts are definitely improved but are still lacking overall uh, the, the amount of money that people are asking for overall seemed more realistic uh, but there are no front and back loading of contracts still. There are still no fifth year options. That's something I got asked about a lot. That's still not there. And I will say in free agency, some people still ask for too much, noticeably like backup quarterback types. But I did see Swami, who is a dev, say that that's a bug and they're trying to get that addressed. But overall, the free agents seem to be asking for more real, you know, realistic, reasonable contracts. But the backup QB types... You know, the low 70s type QBs, definitely, they still seem to be asking for a little bit too much. Number five, there are still no coordinators in the game except for the scenario engine. A coordinator, you know, will hit you up via the scenario engine, but he's not a real coordinator. You still can't sign those guys and have them affect your team. That is still one of the big misses for franchise mode. Number six, create a team and relocation. There's still no create a team in the game. I don't know if we're going to see that back anytime soon because I think the NFL is kind of weird about that one. Uh, relocation is still the same. It's all the same teams. That hasn't been touched. I would, you know, if we can't get create a team, I would like to see them at least expand the relocation because it's just gotten so old for people at this point. People want something new there. Um, number seven, the stats. So, sim stats to me we're still a little wild they weren't terrible but they were a little wild like after the first season Marcus Mariota was leading the league in passing yards now is that impossible I don't think that's impossible but it just seemed like that wasn't very likely and one thing I noticed that was really weird was the receivers like the top 10 guys in receiving yards were just names you would never expect to be there like the guy who led the league in yards was Adam Humphreys and it was guys like Taylor Gabriel in the top five. And not to say that these guys are bad receivers, but they're not guys that you would really ever expect to be leading the league in yards. Like, in the top ten, there was no Antonio Brown, Michael Thomas, Julio Jones, A.J. Green, Keenan Allen, T.Y. Hilton. Like, none of those names, like, not a single one. It was all guys that you would consider, like, second and third tier guys that was leading the league in receiving yards. But, you know, I don't know if that was just a random case. I will say the sim stats for running quarterbacks, that looked like it's still an issue. Um, the highest uh, yards for a QB rusher was Cam Newton, and he had 64 yards on the season. So, 
you know, Lamar Jackson had like 40 yards in the season. Obviously, that wouldn't be the case. So it doesn't seem like that's fixed yet. I don't know if that's something that they still have yet to tackle, and maybe they will have it fixed in the final version. But from what I saw, QBs still don't rush when you sim. Uh, when you sim, and there was still no historical stat tracking, which is still a big miss. You can't look back and see, you know, which player played for what team which year and things like that. The you know the historical stats. So that's still a big miss. Number eight. The progression and regression uh, system definitely seems to be better balanced. You can also now, uh, you, you won't lose a development trait, um, you know, as, as you go on. If, if they're a star or a superstar, they're going to stay that, which is cool. But it definitely seemed pretty decent. I didn't feel like, outside of like a couple of my players, I didn't feel like they were regressing like insanely fast. There were a couple guys that did, uh, but for the most part, I didn't see that. And progression seemed a lot better, especially like getting those XP points. It seemed a little bit easier to get those and really upgrade those lower overall guys. Like a guy that would come in at a 70 after three years, you know, you could get him into the mid 80s and he would be, you know, a viable starter for you. Um, the scouting, number nine, scouting is still the same from what I could see. Uh, you know, they, that's something I really hope that they can expand upon soon because that's it's just really bland. And just overall, like with the scouting going along with the drafting, for me, I noticed that most rookies that I drafted seemed to be very low overalls. It was very, like I said, in four seasons, I only got one guy that actually you know, was a X factor, and he came in at a 78 overall, which was fine, and I was able to get him to about an 87 at the end of that first year, but most of the guys I drafted were, you know, even guys that were ranked highly on the board, you know, they were first round talent, or, you know, guys I scouted, and it was like, yes, mid first rounder, and I was drafting these guys, and they were like 65 overall, and it was saying that I reached a lot, and now I do know they spread the ratings out, so I don't know if that has something to do with it as well, but it definitely seemed a lot harder to me in the minimal time that I played, it seemed harder to draft a good rookie, like, any rookie that you got, it took a couple years, two, three years, like, you really had to, you know, get his XP, and really, like, grind him up to make him a guy that was, you know, able to start, but, you know, overall, they definitely they definitely were lower overalls. Number 10, the Pro Bowl is a good addition. Obviously, glad that it's back. It's fun to play, especially with the abilities. You have so many abilities out there in the Pro Bowl. Um, it's just a fun thing to play if you don't make if you don't make the Super Bowl. It's fun to just have all those superstars in the field. There's nothing to write home about. It's just the Pro Bowl. But I never felt like I wanted to skip it. I always felt like I wanted to play it when I didn't make the Super Bowl. So I thought it was fun to have back. Uh, number 11, the rating spread. Now, the ratings were not official in the beta, but you could still see how spread out the ratings were. And a big thing about this, especially with how the contracts were, and, you know, it's, it's harder to resign everybody now. Like, I had to let a lot of good people go after, you know, two and three years. There was some good guys, even just mid-level type guys that I could not resign. So, there were points after my second and third year where I might have had four or five people on the team that was a 65 to you know, 69 overall, and they were a starter, like guys on the offensive line or linebackers, so it was at the point where it actually felt like a big upgrade when you could sign a mid-70s overall, because, I, like, for example, I had a center that was like a 68 overall, so when I was able to sign a guy that was 75 overall at my center position, that just felt like a huge win, whereas in past Maddens, you would have been trying to upgrade that 75 overall, but now that guy actually can be a viable starter for you because of how spread out it was, so you don't overlook those mid-70s, high-70s guys no more. Those guys actually seem like big wins because it's still a huge upgrade over some of your spots, so I, I kind of did like that a lot. Number uh, 12, the trade logic definitely seemed improved, but it's still nowhere near perfect. There's still some wild trades that happen. There's still some guys that seem a little bit too easy to, to acquire. It definitely seems a little bit better, but they still need more work on that. Number 13, the upgrade system is still exactly the same. I personally like it. I know people are split. Some people love it. Some people hate it because they want to pick the individual attributes. I like the upgrade system. I like just being able to pick, you know, of the archetype of the player, which area I want to approve, and then it just kind of upgrades random stats. I feel like it's more realistic. I feel like guys progress in a more natural way. Again, if you don't like it, I completely understand why you wouldn't like that system, but it, it is unchanged. They didn't really do anything with it. I, I personally like it. Um, but yeah, it's that that's still the same if you were expecting anything different there. Number 14, from what I could tell, and I, I feel like this is a big one for Madden that you have to mention, nothing seemed to be removed. Um, nothing, to my, to my knowledge, was removed. Everything was either left untouched, it was improved upon, whether in a, 
a, a great way or just a minimal way or there was something new i didn't see anything that looked like it was taken away from the mode so uh, i mean for madden that honestly is like a positive because it seems like they are finally kind of getting to that place where they're not removing anymore they're just trying to build it back up but they need to definitely speed that process up and number 15 just to kind of sum everything up is franchise mode in madden 20 improved yes it is improved but it still lacks depth and that's really the best way to explain Madden 20. Is it better than Madden 19, Madden 18? Absolutely, because there are things that were improved upon and there are new things like the Pro Bowl being back and the Scenario Engine. But the Scenario Engine, from what I played, still lacks depth. Um, you know, the contracts still lack depth because there's not all those options in there. The scouting still lacks depth. It's very bare bones. There's no coordinators. There's no mini camp and things like that. So it is improved, but it's still a ways away from where it needs to be. If you're a guy that plays Madden every year and plays franchise every year, will you enjoy 20 better than 19? Yes, you will, because there's more there. There is a little bit more depth than what you've been playing. If you're a guy that plays the older games and you're not looking to upgrade until it meets, you know, what you saw on the PS2 days, then this is still not going to be the year for you. They didn't do enough this year to say, hey, you're going to get off the old game where you had all this immersion and depth and come here. I don't think so. But that's my honest review of franchise mode from what I played. If you have any other questions that I didn't touch on, drop them below. I'll be sure to answer them. And as always, I will see you guys next time.